So let's go ahead and begin to work with Design Center. Now, the first thing we want to do is make sure you know where to go to download this. So if you go to the Vantage website and log in under the Dealer tab, you'll see there is a Support drop-down menu, and then there is a Downloads, and you can select on the Downloads, and here towards the top you'll find the most current releases, and then there's older releases of the uh, different softwares that we have. So you need to download Design Center, uh, the most current version, and if you don't have that, go ahead and uh, pause the video and get that loaded now. So now that we have Design Center loaded, we're going to show you how to do some connections. Now, the fourth tab across says connections. I'm going to come in and I'm going to put in the IP address. This is one of the locations where I can put the IP address of the controller that I'm working at. Since mine is a 1.40 or 192.168.1.40, I go ahead and enter that in, hit OK. And then I can click on this yellow Vantage symbol and it will go ahead and connect to the system. Notice there's a drop down tab next to this and this is where I would select and change it whether I'm connecting with the USB connection or the Ethernet connection. So once this connection has been made, I am now connected to the controller and controlling it live. There's a couple other settings I want to make sure you're aware of. The next one is under settings. So this is your project information. Notice you have the project name and it is important to make sure that you are naming the project um, so that when you send in this file to the, your customer service rep, uh, they will be able to distinguish between your Smith and your somebody else's Smith that might be in the same town, for example. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this the Butcher, butcher Residence. Notice that as I do that, it automatically changes the name here on my area view on the left hand side of Butcher Residence. So back under settings and project information, that first tab we just changed the job name. Uh, any of these other things that you want to check and, and make notification on would be fine. That's for your records, not ours. Now, this is also a good place to fill in the rest of the information for the owner. Once again, helping you distinguish between which project you're working on um, and so that the customer service rep can track that and have it associated with you. Um, here at the bottom section, though, where it says controller IP address, this is actually an important place to put the IP address. This is going to retain the address per project that you are working on. So, for example, the Smith residence or the Butcher residence here has this address. If I go over to the Joneses' house and they have a different address, um, whatever address I have in here, if there isn't one on the file, is going to pop up here. And so, Keeping one in the settings, in the project information for the specific project you're working on is a good idea. You can also put the external IP address in this location. Um, once you're completed with the project and doing service calls uh, remotely, that might be a good uh, option to swap that out with the external IP address. Location and time is one of the ones you are going to want to set up, at least the first time that you set up Design Center. Under this tab, you're going to go in and set up your location by the state or providence that you might be in. Set up the city, um, you, and that will fill in your time zone and your daylight savings information. Um, you do also have the ability to set it up by latitude and longitude, um, but if it is not one of the preset cities that we have already in the system, you would need to go through and set up the rest of the information, setting the time zone, setting the daylight savings, both the start date and the end date, enabling the uh, whether or not you utilize daylight savings and so forth. So um, if there's a city that's close by, you may want to just select that. Um, then after you've got that set, go ahead and click this set as default and this is going to go ahead and um, change the profile of your design center. So any project that you open up is going to automatically start with the location and setting that you have uh, set up uh, here in Design Center. So 
The next thing that I want to talk about is time. Under system, you've got a date and time tab you can go into. And this comes in handy for several different things. First off, um, I can read what the controller time is. So if I click on controller time, it'll sh pull across what that controller time is. I can compare it to what my computer time is, and I can do an update of all the controllers. I can also set the time. So for example, if I wanted to test, let's try it this way. I'm going to test a sunrise and sunset. So I click on the sunrise and sunset. I've got 7.28.51 for my sunrise time. So I can go ahead and change the uh, time to be just a few moments before that. Um, maybe change that to 45 uh, in the AM. Then I can do update all controllers. And then any task that I might have launching at sunrise would launch for me as it, it pulls that. Notice if I click on controller time now, notice that it just pulled across the new time that I had put over to that. Um, I can also adjust uh, any date uh, issues that I might have as well with that. And I can do this remotely if I need to uh, fine tune a, a client's uh, time on their controller. All right, so let's go ahead and on the left hand side, I'm going to show you a couple settings that we need to make with the in the controller. Um, so the best way to get to the controller view uh, is go into the enclosure view. And as you can see, there's a representation of the enclosure. Um, I can make adjustments to that by selecting on the device. Hopefully you notice that it is now highlighted in red. If I select just the controller, my object editor changes um, and now I am just working on just the controller. If I select once again the enclosure, I can now change this from a four or a two or even down to a zero uh, enclosure. And um, then I can come on the master controller and there's a couple of things I want to point out here. Uh, notice I could name the controller if I have more than one in the project that could come in handy. I also can have a startup task so anytime there's a power outage if I want um, certain lights to launch or certain things to happen after a power outage every time that controller starts up that would launch that task. I also have the ability to adjust between the 36 volt or the 24 volt depending on which controller I have on the project. Notice it will give me an error every time I program if I have the wrong uh, volt uh, voltage selected. Um, so you'll, you'll want to have the correct voltage selected so that you don't run into that error and also so that you don't have problems with getting uh, too many keypads on a uh, controller or not being able to put as many on the 36 as you'd like if you have the 24 selected incorrectly. So while we're here, this is also the place you would come and we'll, we'll discuss this a little more in detail uh, in class when people come in for trainings. Um, but this is where you would come to add the serial ports that are on the controller or add TCP client ports as well to uh, the master controller. So let's look at updating the firmware of a controller. If you go to system, notice at the very bottom there's an update firmware and you have a whole list of all the different products that Vantage allows you to update over the station bus and over the network. So I would come to update controller, click on that. Um, the read learn level values is a, a message that's going to pop up every time letting you know that uh, if you're going to update somebody's firmware and they've gone through and you've given them abilities to say for example use uh, uh, learn scene programming where they press and hold it and set it to a level and now that is learned into the system um, if you do not uh, click yes here on this read the learned values you will be erasing that and you will be reprogramming their house with your original uh, design and original programming. And so if you've got those type of features in your programming set, you're going to want to make sure that anytime you do an update of the firmware, which is basically erasing the system, you want to read these learn levels. I'm going to go ahead and click no because it's not a problem for what I am working on.
So notice I've got three different things that pop up. I've got a kernel, I've got the roots, and I've got the app. I'm going to go ahead and click update on this and it's gonna run through and see if there's anything newer. If there isn't anything newer, then it'll pop up with this question and ask me if I want to install this um, because it is already installed. Um, I can click yes if I wanna do it a second time or I can just click no through these questions and just update the one uh, specific portion of the uh, firmware that needs to be updated. So let's talk about saving the file first off. I can save this file by clicking on the Save tab or also like any uh, Microsoft type of software, drop down the file and click Save or Save As. If I uh, click on Save, notice that it'll go ahead and put me in uh, one of my locations and I can go ahead and name that. I recommend naming it something along the lines of with the uh, client's name and then something to do with the date code that helps uh, you be able to organize those um, depending on uh, how you like to do it. And then backing up that file. So I'll go ahead and save that. Now notice I am disconnected after that uh, full update of the firmware, which once again basically just wiped it clean. So I'm going to reconnect to the system and then I'm going to go ahead and do a full program. Now notice I've got an update and then I have a program. So uh, as you hover over those, notice that it will pop up and tell you what those are. So the first time I do a connect to a system, I'm going to do a full program and then I would do updates um, in between the time while I was working on the project and then maybe at the end of the job or end of the day, I mean, um, do a, a full program after doing updates. Um, so here, after I've clicked on program, notice several things popped up. I can update the system time, which I don't need to do every time I'm writing to it. Um, also, I can write to the memory card. Also, it can do hardware checking for me. Now, writing to the memory card on a larger project does uh, take up some valuable time, so I don't necessarily recommend writing to the memory card every time, but that's a personal preference. And then you can uh, do a hardware check just to make sure that your stations come across and if anything pops up. Also, you have read options. Um, you can read the timer times, variables, and uh, learn load levels. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and it's going to do a program for me of the system, which is very quick since I don't really have anything on the system. Thank you.